the Joe Rogan experience. You know? Well, you were a big part of the Black Zillions getting started. Yeah. And when you had that opportunity uh, as a guy who was a former world champion to go there and sort of get become a part of a team from the ground up, what did you try to do that was different than had, you had seen in other camps that you had participated in? I wanted to make it just like a... Um, you know the the biggest thing back then it was it was that there was you always had to go to so many different places in order to just get that one thing so i wor really wanted to just make it so that we, our guys didn't have a need to go anywhere else for anything else and that was the whole idea behind the whole black zillions you know we brought in all kinds of people from every different aspect from you know training to to uh to nutrition almost every aspect of it and um that's what we wanted to provide our athletes with just like the total the total game so they really didn't have to do anything or worry about anything except for showing up the train and um it worked for a while it worked for a while but but it's uh it's a hard thing to maintain because that's in a very very expensive thing you know mm -hmm. yes and, well glenn the guy who yeah. put up the cash i mean i had heard some outlandish figures that he had uh, was in the hole for that place for by the time everything was up and running yeah yeah it was um it, it was a pretty it was a pretty pretty hefty ticket man it was a pretty hefty ticket mm -hmm. and it was uh it, it was it was an expense that um it, it did get out of hand it did get out I'm of hand. sure yeah he um he and, and and here's and here's the thing about it. Like even even his situation, you know, he got himself in a situation where he was doing so much for people, it just became a thing that people expected out of him. Mm -hmm. And then when he wasn't able to do it anymore, then it was kind of like you know people were like, oh man, this guy isn't this and he wasn't that. But right. he just he just wanted to do so much and had an idea to want to do 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 things on another level. But at the same time, you know the the finances of of doing it was a massive undertaking i'm sure i mean all credit to dan lambert because dan lambert has uh, he's been doing this from the beginning yeah that fucking guy i mean he is the reason why these super camps got started yeah, dan lambert absolutely. put his own money and then the new att they built he built himself from the ground up built the whole fucking building and, you know, I've, I've, I haven't seen it in person. I have friends that have gone to visit it, but I've seen it in videos. And it's, holy shit. Yeah, it's, it's phenomenal. I went inside of it. Dan's man. the man. Yeah, Dan. He really is. Dan, Dan is a good guy, man. Um, you know, after the whole thing with the Black Zillions, you know, him and I got got to have a chance to spend some time together and just and just, and just talk, you know. Right. And, there was so much weird animosity. It, it was weird. And then the UFC put that show together. Yeah, it's like I inherited beef with people that I didn't even know. <laughs> I, I, I didn't even say hello to them, you know what I'm saying? That's and, so crazy. And I just inherited this beef, and <sighs> I was like, you know, it, it's silly. And especially since the fact that ATT is like literally right down the street from my house. It would be right. closer to go there than anywhere else. But it was weird for a while. But actually talking to Dan and actually getting to know him, and, you know, it, it was – um. It, it it was a good it was a good thing because uh, you know I got I got to get a lot of respect for mm -hmm. for him and just for what he's done with American Top Team and ATT in general. No, he's a he's a brilliant guy. I'm, I love that guy as a person. I'm a big fan of his. I just love that a person like that, like Dan Lambert, can literally change the course of MMA by setting an example. Yeah, and by having a gym that sets an example that's such a, an insanely high level. So big, so many world class fighters there. So much strength and conditioning, everything under one roof, dorms, everything. Well, see, I think that was that was a thing that that kind of you know <laughs> that that kind of pushed things uh, in that in that position for Glenn. You know, because right, he, he had to keep up. He had to keep up, or he was trying to outdo. Yeah, he was trying to do uh, Dan Lambert. I always wanted to do something that Dan wasn't doing. You know, good so, luck with that. Yeah, and that. <laughs> It's a good way to go broke. That's man. a good. That's a good way to to spend a lot of money. I'll tell you that. Yeah, yeah. There's. I mean, there's a lot of super camps out there now. It's interesting to see these places. You have TriStar in Montreal. You have you know uh, Duke Rufus in Milwaukee. You have Jackson Winklejohn in Albuquerque. You got AKA. You know, it's uh, when you first started, there was not that many places. No, nah, there really wasn't. And and to even get what we wanted out of it, you know, we there's three gyms that we can go through. We'll go to either Jackson's in Albuquerque, we'll go to TriStar in Montreal, or we'll go to Denver and we'll work with Trevor Whitman in Denver. So we had the three camps that we bounced around from and and um 
that's where we would go to get the most work. And it, and it worked for a while. You know, it worked for a while for the most part. But just all that traveling, it just became hard to do. But That it, has to wear on you when you're in the middle of a camp and you're yeah, staying I, in hotels. And Yeah, it, it, it does. Like, um, like when I was in camp, I really wouldn't travel too much. But like when – so what we would do is that um, if, if Nate Marquardt was in camp and he wanted to stay at home most of the time, so we'll stagger it where – you know, he'll have a tough guy in camp every single time. So I'll I'll be a couple of weeks when George wasn't there or when Keith wasn't there, you know? And then sometimes we'll all come together. But for the most part, we'll just all rotate into these gyms depending on who was fighting, who needed the work. 